it's that time of the afternoon where it's, we're going to do some more mailbag, guys. Remember, these are questions and comments that you guys leave on the channel, and we kind of do our humble best to try and, uh, uh, and answer them or throw them out to the rest of the community. But before we get going, normal parish notices have to be observed. So if you haven't subscribed, why not hit the subscribe icon? If you want to be notified when content like this hits the channel, that's the bell icon. If you like the content of the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the creation of videos on the channel, it's the Patreon account is down there, as are the Facebook and Instagram uh, feeds. I highly recommend you go across and tag me on those, my Facebook page and my Instagram feed because that's where all the announcements and other stuff gets um, pushed. But now, back to the video. That time of day, it's uh, late afternoon and I am sitting in my little mini studio. I have a keyboard in front of me that I haven't disclosed to you guys yet. But it is sitting in front. I'm using it as a kind of desk at the moment for this. And I'm not going to push the camera back because I'm going to save this. Anyway, so the first question on this session comes from... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, let me find the right page. So here, I was already set up. And now I'm not. Okay. Uh, and it comes from Florin Dimitri. And... Uh, he writes, I think it's a he, I bought a Corgo Oasis 88 from a friend who has had it from someone who bought it in the US. Unfortunately, his English is not, not brilliant, but we can get, get, get across that. I want to install on it the latest version, 1.3.3 of the operating system. It's actually 1.3.3a, but we'll, we'll carry on. I tried to enter the Korg site, um, but as I do not have the purchase details, I cannot register to download it from there. I really appreciate it. If you can help me with this in, di in direction, have a great day. And this is in response to a Korg Oasis, the final upgrade. So I did a whole series of, of videos about this because when I bought this um, keyboard, it hadn't been upgraded at all. It was literally as if it had come out of the factory, um, still sitting on base operating system 1.0. Um, so I upgraded this. I went through a whole series of videos about upgrading this, this keyboard to where it is now. Anyway... Um, the problem we have is I did those videos back in 2018. So it's only two years ago um, from where we are now. And in that time, Korg have made the decision to depreciate KorgUser.net. And KorgUser.net is where you went to effectively register um, these keyboards at the time. Now, Korg put in place a, a system where if you wanted to effectively download the new updates of software you had to register your keyboard and it was a um i think it was two things number one they wanted to keep track of who owned the keyboards and number two it was an anti-theft device because it meant that if you registered the keyboard and then that keyboard was stolen you could report it to korg and then somebody who's trying to upgrade your keyboard would have to then try and register it and you would find out where that keyboard was and you could obviously reunite the keyboard with the original owner um, now, why did they do that? Well, originally brand new, these things were $8,000. Yes, $8,000 worth of keyboard when they were brand new in 1997, maybe maybe a year or two out. But they were very, very expensive. Um, and you can kind of see, what was it? No, it wasn't 97, it was 2007, silly sod. Um, it was very expensive. Let's Let's leave it at that. Um, and what you used to do was you'd go onto corguser.net, you would follow the links, you would register your keyboard, uh, and it would ask you for a public ID. Now, you get to the public ID by pressing the global button, which is there, and then you uh, press the plug-in info button, which comes up on the screen, and the public ID should be at the top of the screen there. Now, you won't be able to see that because of the camera angle, and even if you could see that and you could see my public ID, it's completely completely useless to you because that public ID is unique to this keyboard. Um, it is a, it's like a fingerprint effectively. Um, and that's to, to do with sort of how the, the Mac address and, and stuff like that works. Um, so guys, um, and I know a number of you contacted me and asked me if I can give you my public ID and how I can give you my software keys to unlock, unlock the upgrades. And even if I did, 
they would be completely useless to you because your public ID is not the same as my public ID and it's the public ID that's used to encrypt the keys. So, I'm sorry guys, stop asking because I can't give you them. Um, anyway, the process was you put the public ID into the page, you registered your keyboard and therefore you could then download the updates and the code for the updates and you could load, once you loaded them on here, it would ask you for a code, you entered the code, and job done. Now, as I said, Korg are depreciating korguser.net. A number of pages have, have disappeared. Some are still there, although you can't navigate to them, but the actual page is still there in the background. But the key pages for registration and management of um, the uh, codes, etc., for this thing have gone. Um, I think Korg have taken them down. So the only way you're going to get around this now is unfortunately you are going to have to ring Korg up and you're going to have to explain to Korg where you've got your keyboard. Now it's very important if you are going to go and buy one of these high-end Korg keyboards that you make sure you have purchase um, or you have um, proof of purchase because Korg will probably ask you for it because of this anti-theft thing. But people who, who have done this said it's relatively simple to do. You ring Korg user up, you might have to sit on the phone for a bit, you get through to somebody, you tell them you bought one of these keyboards, you give them the public ID, as long as it's not been stolen, they will then register it in your name, and you should theoretically then be able to get the codes for the upgrades and the, and the uh, installed plugins, etc. Okay. I'm sorry it's not it's not easy. Well, let's say that. It is relatively easy. It's just a little bit painful. Okay, so there you go. That's how you do that one. And the next one on this session comes from my friend in Thailand, Frankie Gunn. Hi, Frankie. Um, and admittedly, this was a question a couple of probably a couple of months ago, actually, um, that I've just got around to, uh, I actually answered a couple of months ago, I'm just getting around to doing the video for it, um, but I thought it was a really interesting question that he asked. Um, and he, this, this is the question, in response to an SMR I did uh, at the end of June, which was do it all, do it well, uh, would you buy a Montage or a Phantom over a Kronos? And uh, he writes, uh, hi, John. I have a question. If you had a Phantom 7 as the heart of your rig uh, in combo with a door in addition to a JDXA, a System A and a Jupiter XM, really good keyboard combination, um, and had to let go at least one or maybe two of the extra synths, which one would you sell? And this was a really interesting question. And my initial guts, gut was to get rid of the JDXA. And I said this to Frankie at the time because we've been exchanging co correspondence. Um, but then I sat down and thought about it for a few days, and then I changed my mind. I invoked editor's privilege, and I changed my mind. Um, but let me explain why. Um, if you're on a limited budget, what you're trying to do is obviously you're trying to get a good keyboard spread that gives you a good wide range of sounds and a good set of options. Um, and the setup that he has is a good range of options. Um, now... I'm not a fan of the Phantom 7, okay? It's not that I'm not a fan of the Phantom 7. I have a Kronos, I have an Oasis, okay? I'm not buying into the Phantom roadmap at the moment, especially as I think in about a year's time, Krog are probably going to drop another monster on the market. Um, the Kronos is nearly 10 years old now. Well, in fact, it probably is 10 years old. So it's about time that another monster hit the market. We don't know what Korg are going to drop, um, but I can guarantee whatever Phantom and Montage have, the next keyboard is going to be better. So it's better than the current Kronos and better than some of the features that have been installed on the Phantom 7. So the reason I'm not a fan is because I don't see how it works in my setup. Um, but it is a good sound. It is a good keyboard. It is a monster keyboard. It's another, it is another monster keyboard. And it is very, very good for, J, for, for sound manipulation. And to a lesser extent, that's what the JDXA is about as well, is about sound manipulation. And it's kind of like a smaller brother to the sort of the Phantom, if you like. So my initial reaction was, why well, have two machines that can do the same? 
get rid of the JDXA and keep the system eight and keep the keep the Jupiter XM. But surprisingly, I then changed my mind. And I said, get rid of I have found myself writing back to, to Frankie saying, get rid of the system eight. And I never thought I'd ever write that. But there is some logic behind this. And the logic is the Jupiter XM produces the same tones as the System 8. It just does it in a different way. So if you're looking for the tonal qualities of some of these legacy synths, you probably would keep the XM and get rid of the System 8. Because I think going forward, the XM is going to be far more versatile than the System 8. We're not seeing very much movement from Roland in terms of whatever packs are going to come out for the System 8 going forward. The Jupiter XM is their new, and it's got the Zencore, and it looks like they're going to sort of be putting the st their, their um, toys in that bucket rather than the System 8 bucket. So therefore, if you're going to get rid of one keyboard, what I said is... I'd keep the JDXA because the JDXA can be used as an extension of the Phantom 7. I use the XM for legacy sounds. I use the Phantom effectively for sound design. And that would be the setup if you had to get rid of one. Now, the other thing that I sort of kind of said to Sir Frankie was that I don't like the Jupiter XM. It's not I don't like what the Jupiter XM can do. I just don't like the Jupiter XM as in its form factor. The Jupiter X, for me, is a better keyboard option. The Jupiter XM, I don't... I mean, I kind of struggle quite a lot with my fingers anyway because I've got quite fat fingers and therefore I need decent-sized keys, which is kind of why I play a full-weighted keyboard over here, and this keyboard that's sitting in front of me that you can't see is also um, a fairly wide key base. Um, I find with smaller keys, I keep hitting duff notes, and that's purely because i got fat fingers, and when I'm, I'm so used to sort of where the key spacing is, the smaller keyboards. Now, I dare say I could get used to it, but why should I when you've got the Jupiter X? The only problem with that is... If you were to get rid of the XM and up trade up to the X, number one, the XM is a second-hand machine, so you're going to have to discount it from that. The X is a considerably amount more cash from the X to XM, so you're going to have to put quite a lot of cash into the deal to make it work. But that's just me. So hopefully that's answered that question. <laughs>